Hi guys, so today what we're going to do is just go over what we w worked on in class with VR video editing um, 360 footage. Um, in order to do this, uh, you obviously need some VR uh, 360 footage. Uh, you should have that in your um, folder that you have. Uh, this needs to be an equal rectangular uh, video, so make sure it's stitched if you uh, haven't stitched it yet. And we'll need one audio file um, that's your voiceover. Starting in Premiere, we're going to click on the New Project button. Uh, we're going to name this project uh, VR Video uh, in the upper left-hand corner here. And we'll make sure that our project location is being saved into that uh, folder where the media is. If it's not, make sure you find it on your desktop and save it in your media folder so you know where everything is located. Go ahead and hit the Create button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure your window workspace is in editing. And if, the edit, if it doesn't look like mine, go to Reset Saved Layout. Uh, we'll be changing the workspace quite a bit, so make sure you're able to get to that Windows workspace often here. Double click the bin to bring in your footage. I will bring in my video and my audio by shift selecting and hitting import. I now have both pieces of media, an equal rectangular VR video and an audio waveform. Uh, in Premiere, if you drag your VR video into the timeline, uh, it will recognize that this is in fact a VR video uh, and create a sequence that's two by one, uh, which is the correct proportions for VR video. You can double check though by going into sequence, sequence settings and uh, checking the VR properties and making sure that it is set to equal rectangular and monoscopic that'll ensure that your VR video is working. If you don't already have your VR viewer or your, uh, your toggle for your VR video display here, which allows you to pan around, uh, you can get to that by hitting the plus button and selecting it in your thing and dragging it to wherever you want on this dock and hitting OK. This allows you to view your entire thing, your entire uh, video, as well as uh, view um, as if you're looking around uh, in a headset. Uh, you can play your video back by hitting the spacebar that starts the playback and hit spacebar again to stop. Um, I'm going to reset everything to zero here because this is the orientation that you are looking at when you first open up the video. Now if this is not what you want, uh, you want to recenter it someplace else, uh, the way you do that is you go to the effects tab Type in the VR, type in VR here under the search button so that you can get to the VR um, video um, um, plugins here or the effects. And what we're going to do is we're going to be using the VR rotate sphere. So you're going to drag that onto the actual video. And we're going to now double click this video so it opens up in this viewer. Open up the effects tab. And you'll notice right now that we have the VR rotate sphere that wasn't there before. Select your pan Y, and by moving the pan Y, by clicking and holding, you can actually rotate the actual sphere so that this is what people see when they first put the headset on. So this becomes our new center point. Again, as long as these are zero by zero, right? And you can see what this is really doing is it's really just physically sliding the video left to right. Now, obviously, you can rotate it up and down. You can change some of the things. I'll put this back in the VR viewer here. You can open it up so people are looking at the sky, but they'll be forced to look at the sky the, the entire time. If you do move the X and then the Z uh, will make people somewhat nauseous because the entire time they'll be crooked. So really I would suggest only use the panning uh, of the Y axes in order to recenter your video so that they're seeing exactly what you want uh, at the beginning. Now we talked a little bit about editing video. We talked that you can use the move tool, V for move, and trim the end or trim the beginning. We also talked about using the cut tool, the razor tool, so that we can cut pieces of video up. And then going back to the move tool, we can then select things, delete them, fill in the gaps by selecting it and hitting the delete button. I'm gonna undo that because that's not what we're gonna do yet. We also talked in class a little bit about uh, being able to uh, change the audio volume for the clip by physically moving the volume level up or down 
on the video. You can also double click this um, video, open up the effects control, and you'll notice down here by the volume, if I move this video, this line up and down, it also changes right here. So you can do it either here, right, or you can do it uh, on the timeline. Okay. The next thing we did after uh, talking a little bit about the editing tools, trim and cut, uh, is we added that um, audio into the piece. Uh, that was uh, that is the one that we brought in, which is an, a, an audio recording, um, a voice recording that we did. Uh, in this case, what we did is pre-trimmed everything, right? This is not trimmed. So we moved our playhead to where we want the audio to start, and we selected the I button on the keyboard to create an in point, in for I. You can also just click on this little mark in uh, button right here and a mark out button here. We go to the end, we want to out point here, hit the O button, and now this video or this piece of uh, footage is trimmed, and we can physically drag this little icon for the audio down into our timeline and let go, and we're putting it underneath our video. So at this point, we've got, sorry about all the dinging here, at this point we've got, um, it's the audio playing at the same time as the video. This is Curtis Stein. So what we want to do now is trim our video so that it corresponds to the audio so that uh, when we start talking, it also, um, the video starts. If we have a little bit of space at the beginning, we know we can select it and hitting delete. That makes it start right at the beginning. We can use the plus button to zoom in and the minus button to zoom out if we can't see what we're doing. Finally, we, we're asked to give, put a little piece of text into this so that we know what we're looking at. So we went to the text tool and we just clicked on the equal rectangular somewhere in the space and we just typed something. I'm just gonna type the path. I'm gonna double click that to select the text and what I can do now is go to the Windows Workspace gra Captions and Graphics. And that'll open up a whole new set of windows here. And this allows me to modify the color of the text. So maybe I want to make it a little more like yellow. And maybe give myself a, an outline, right? And maybe uh, change the font to something different. Um, anyway, you can do a little bit of changing here. Once everything has been changed and you're happy with the results, we'll move this around uh, later, but go ahead and go back to Windows Workspace Editing. Uh, that puts us back in the editing area and I'm gonna go back to my Move tool. So you can kind of see we can move this around, but in order for this to work with our VR, you can see that there's a curvature here on this, the path. And that's because we haven't uh, actually turned this um, this text into something that's spherical. And the, the way we do that is we go to the effects tab down here and we should already be in VR. And what we're going to do is we're gonna use this plane to sphere because the computer thinks of the text as being on a piece of paper or on a plane. And we wanna turn that into a sphere. So we just drag that on the actual text and that's that little pink thing here, let go. And you'll notice right away it got really, really small. So if I go to my effects control for this area here, you should see now we have the VR rotate sphere. But if I select my text, you'll notice that there is a plane to sphere area here. And this is how it looks uh, so far. Now, if I scale it, it makes the actual text bigger, but you notice that it stays straight. It's not curvy, curving anymore. If I open up the rotate projection, this allows me to modify where it is in space. So if I'm looking, maybe I want the word path uh, to be like over here. So I can actually rotate that till I see it here. Maybe scale it down again a little bit and then change the position uh, like this. Now, if I want this to lay more at a different angle or actually be at a, some other angle, uh, you can actually rotate this in three-dimensional space as well. So I can rotate it like this uh, using the rotate source or like this. 
So you can actually get this to be, you know, whatever way you want. And finally, you can, uh, selecting that text, open up the opacity area and change the, the opacity so it's a little more see-through. So when people are looking at the video, they'll start here, but if they look behind them, that's the text that they're going to see. So that was text to uh, uh, plane to sphere. Now I can go ahead and extend this text so that goes throughout the entire piece if I want. Uh, the last thing that we did was to go to uh, color correction. So we selected the video and we went to Windows Workspace Color. And by selecting the video, this allows us to change the video. I'm going to open this up so we can see it a little better. So I made it a little bit warmer maybe uh, and also a little more exposed and then maybe a little bit uh, a little more saturation or more colors. And then if I want to see how this is looking, it's a little more like it's dusk or dawn. I'm pretty happy with what we've gotten so far. So I'm ready to export this uh, as a VR video for YouTube. The way you do that is you select this area or this area. Uh, let's go back to Windows Workspace Editing. So I've selected this area. I go to the Export button here or go to File, Export Media. I then select the format preset, scroll down, I go to more presets and I type VR again and this time I'm going to select VO, VR monoscopic match source stereo audio. Uh, that's what we're using. Uh, stereo audio is just normal audio and monoscopic means it's not 3D. So it's just a single video. Hit OK. I check my video to make sure everything looks good and I'm now going to export this equal rectangular video and it's going to export to this location users for if I don't like that I can select something different and then name it something different uh, and save it there and that's going to save it as an mpeg4 once it's exported you can then upload this to YouTube and it will auto detect that it is in fact a VR in fact, I just want to show you under the video area here with more that, in fact, the VR box should be checked, uh, which you should see right here, VR video. And you can see that it is checked. If this is not checked, then YouTube will not recognize this as a VR video. Um, on the contrary, uh, or at least if this is checked and it was a normal video, this will become a VR video. Uh, if this is checked. So be careful, like don't export normal video with that checkbox on. And if you do get some issues, make sure that is not turned on by default. Hope this helps. And uh, we will be going over uh, how to remove the tripod and some other uh, video effects on the next video.